members, we're back. And we're now on to item nine, which is the Go Eco State of the Environment Report, which we will take as read, but we will uh, receive their um, presentation. Uh, please note that when we receive a report like this, it is independent and a community point of view. So we've invited other sectors in to talk from their point of view. Uh, and it's exactly what we're doing here. This is Go Eco's point of view on, um, on what's going on in their environment. Uh, so, so just keep that in the back of mind. It doesn't reflect anything at this point in time other than their independent report. So I'll ask them to give a present. If mm. we are to receive this report, and we do, yeah. by majority, does that mean that the report becomes an official document of council? Point of order on that one? Uh, it will be held, It'll be held in the minutes. minutes. It will be held in the agenda, um, and so as such it will be noted as um, Councillor Southgate said, as an official record of the um, viewpoint of GoEco. But it doesn't necessarily mean if, it, if a majority of councillors support it, that it is the view of council? Correct. No. Thank you. No, and that's why I wanted to in, um, make an introduction. Some of the statements that you have included in your report have been um, perceived as inflammatory to some. Always, uh, always that's going to happen. Um, so I... I ask you to um, focus on the respectful elements of your to to, to um, present your report in a respectful way, and um, and we'll just take it from there. Thank you. <laughs> Go. He mihi nui ki a kaito katoa. He mihi nui ki na mana finua o tina e rohi nati wairere. He mihi nui ki te rangatira o tēnei rohi ki ngi tu haitia. Ko whari te tai o taku mahi, ko Joe Wrigley a hau. I'm joined here today um, with some colleagues from the environmental sector. I'm going to introduce you to Adam, who is from Youth for Climate Change, Climate Action, sorry. Uh, Anna Casey Cox, who is uh, GoEco's community liaison. And George Lusty who is from the Gully Projects, and each of us will be speaking for a short time. We hope to add to this report some depth so that you can understand the depth and breadth of the work that's currently been undertaken in Kirikiriroa, Hamilton. GoEco is the largest uh, community-based environmental and sustainable sustainability hub in the Waikato. Approximately 16,000 people have engaged directly with our environment centre and hub on biodiversity, conservation, climate and sustainability topics over the past year. Our vision for healthy environments supported by thriving communities is supported by a diverse and extensive range of communities in the Kirikiriroa, Hamilton and across the region. Biodiversity and conservation is one of our work streams and Project ECHO sits within this work stream for our organisation. Since 2014, GoEco has provided administrative and organising support for this project. The City, Region and Department of Conservation contributed funding to the monitoring project as a result of this community-based collaboration. The data collected has informed the hearing downstairs over the past two weeks. We congratulate Hamilton City Council, Waikato Regional Council and the Department of Conservation for joining with Kirikiriroa-based communities committed to preserving and increasing our indigenous biodiversity. That initial funding has contributed to an increased understanding and community awareness of a key taonga which underpins our local indigenous biodiversity, the Pika Pika. However, this taonga is now has a conservation threat status of nationally critical, and a 70% decline over the next three generations is predicted. Um, good afternoon. Now, uh, my name is Adam Nakowitz, and I'm a year 13 student and the environment captain at Hillcrest High School. Um, I've read the relevant materials, and um, Joe will be speaking directly to the report. 
um, but I want to present the view of youth, um, which is much more expansive and asks the city to, to look at itself from a global perspective. A recent United Nations report stated that without unprecedented changes in our actions and behavior, our planet will suffer drastically from global warming in just 10 years. We are crippling our planet with ever rising levels of greenhouse gases. Our rising ocean temperatures are destroying the sea life and their ecosystems. Our, our insane addiction to perfectly shaped produce at all times of the year has created an agricultural industry awash in pesticides and chemical fertilizers that is killing all of our pollinators. The rise in global sea levels is shrinking our land, drowning the island homes of our Pacific Afanau, causing mass floods and freak weather incidents across the world. Um, another United Nations report this month revealed that up to one million species face extinction. We are triggering a mass extinction event, and we cannot separate this environmental crisis from others. Biodiver biodiversity loss cannot be partitioned from climate change or from human population growth, pollution, or plastics in our oceans. These challenges are all interconnected. We must tackle them in a holistic way because if we, are continue, if we continue to consider these problems in partitioned isolation, solutions will emerge far too slowly and it will be too late to avert a cat catastrophic planet-wise event. We have 10 years left and the countdown has already started. In 10 years, I will be 27 years old, at an age when my peers and I should be planning weddings and thinking about having children or establishing careers. We will be suffering from acute food shortages because we've killed off all of our pollinators. We will be lining up for our water rations because our fresh water supplies will be either destroyed by effluent, fertilizer runoff, microplastics, and commercial toxins, or depleted by droughts and the greed of corporations who care only about bottling up our spring water and selling it back to us shrouded in a single-use plastic bottle. We will be battling the severe heat of summers and the unrelenting cold of winters. We will never see the animals that we were, were in our picture books, giraffes, polar bears, sea turtles, tigers, dolphins. They will join the ranks of the extinct. We will be suffering from public health issues that you cannot even conjure up in your imaginations, in part because our shores will be inundated with tens and millions of climate refugees who have nowhere else to turn. We, New Zealanders, and our refugee guests will all only be thinking about how we can survive another month, another week, another day. This is the inheritance that adults have left us. We need action now, not a 30-year plan, not a 20-year plan, not a 10-year plan. It will be too late. We need a plan now that will be implemented by the end of this year so we can see changes by the start of next year. Hamilton, Kirikiriroa, has the potential to be the next Amster Amsterdam, a city which was repurposed for pedestrians and cyclists. Cars are simply not allowed in downtown areas, and what were once parking spaces now belong to pedestrians. In contrast, it dismayed me to read about the plan to increase parking spaces in Hamilton CBD. This is a step backward and not forward. We need to find every way possible to cut greenhouse gas emissions, not grow them, especially when they are at an all-time high. While there have been some positive strides in increasing bike paths and footpaths, this is merely a scratch on the surface of what we actually need. We need free electric buses and extensive and safe bicycle paths. We need to maximize pedestrian areas. We need cheap, clean public transport to and from Auckland. We need to become a leader in creating a true, greener future. Hamilton Kirikiriroa has the potential to be the next Vancouver, a city that is 26% trees. Those trees are critical in combating climate change. They reduce the ambient air temperature in the summer, increase the total oxygen, and decrease carbon dioxide. I was again dismayed to read about plans to turn Hamilton's outlying green areas into development opportunities that would be converted into housing subdivisions. Again, this is a step backwards, not forwards. We need to develop cooperative housing plans and combine commercial and residential activity within the city limits. It might mean a change in zonation regulations. We need community gardens and we need to plant thousands and thousands of native trees. We need to invest directly in anything that promotes care of the environment. We need a clear river plan, a clean river plan, a renewable energy plan, and immediate action to adopt a more extensive ban on all single-use plastics from the city, including drink bottles, milk bottles, and plastic waste takeaway containers. Um, these are only a few locally-based plans that can put Hamilton Kirikiriroa to the forefront of battling climate change. Perhaps what dismayed me the most though, is that the city is among the ranks of the few cities who refuse to sign the local government climate declaration. It is not solely the responsibility of the central government to take action, but the responsibility of our local councils. 
and their constituents. My peers and I have a grim future ahead of us unless change happens now. We need to move faster and think bigger in order to prevent full-on ecological breakdown and climate catastrophe. My class will be a voting age this year, and in fact, I just enrolled to vote last month. And we are a significant voting bloc, and we, want, we are a group more unified than ever before about what we want in our elected leaders. We want leaders who share our urgency for combating climate change immediately. And we want leaders who don't only talk, but they walk the talk too. So my question to our elected leaders is this. Will you join us in our push to save the planet? Will you make Kiri Kiriroa a leader in combating the climate crisis? Will you promise to act before the clock runs down and we are out of time? Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the time that you've taken. Obviously, a thoughtful analysis um, has taken you some time and you're out of school to yeah, present thank that. You. Wasn't quite expecting it here today in that form, but um, you do address some important issues for Council's consideration. That's the sort of thing that would form a very good basis to a submission to a long-term plan or um, uh, such. But thank you for that perspective. Um, it's certainly in terms of what's going on in the wider community, it's very relevant right now, uh, especially in the millennial com uh, community. So, so Joe, if you could just run us through the key achievements of Go Eco, uh, uh, not rereading the report, that would be, be very good as well, please. Uh, we've got George here to talk to the Gully Project, and I guess one of the key achievements of this year and one of the key pieces of work has been working with the uh, Hamilton City Council Biodiversity Long-Term Plan. Biodiversity Strategy. Strategy, mm. yes. Um, and um, bringing together the many gully groups um, across Kirikirirua Hamilton and other um, stakeholders in that process um, to start to develop a longer term view of what biodiversity and conservation, <coughs> environmental health and sustainability look like um, in this city. Uh, we've recently received a small amount of funding towards scenario planning and we hope to engage with Hamilton City Council and other stakeholders in what the environmental scenario is for us in 30 years and, and, and with the concept that we would uh, identify and develop three scenarios in order to help plan the future work. But I would like to invite George to take some time to talk about the Gully projects and um, the work going ahead in that respect. Just for the Council's information, Go Eco and the Waikato Environment Centre work with a diverse range of groups and the Gully groups are, are just a few of those. Okay, thank you. Um, just um, to help us out in planning the day, if I give you a further 10 minutes, that would be fine. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, kia ora, uh, kia ora tātou katoa nga, e ngā mana, e ngā reo, e ngā hui, e ngā tāngata. Um, my name is George Lusty, so I've been invited here by um, Go Eco to talk to, uh, about our particular aspect, which is uh, forest restoration in the gully systems of um, Kirikiri Draw. Um, I think we're, it's an unusual city that we've got huge extensive gullies going right through, and um, our particular brief, if you like, we're voluntary workers restoring um, native forests for diversity and also for birds and other creatures that live in the forest. So um, I, <coughs> we basically support the work of Go Eco and our previous speaker. Um, so we are sort of practical people on the ground and we like, you know, we get dirty and we plant trees. So um, <coughs> on behalf of the Mangonua Esplanade Forest Restoration Care Group, or in other words known as the Silverdale Gully, uh, we basically support Go Eco's environmental scan. It's very broad based and covers community and environmental aspects. Um, so, in particular, we support Project Echo, which is restoring the, the long tail bat um, population to Kirikiri Roa. It is an endangered species, and it was very surprising when people did a survey that there are extensive populations of the bat in Hamilton and surrounding areas. But the bat itself is like big as my thumb, um, it's a, just a little creature, but it's an indicator species, so people are wanting to cut down trees, and uh, hang on, we can't cut them down because there's bats in there that we didn't know existed, and there's ongoing, you know, issues about um, trees versus, you know, um, 
people wanting to cut them down. So I think the bat itself, you might think, what's the importance of a bat? If you've got bats, you've got a forest, you know, so I think that's important. Um, they're sort of supporting that whole thing. Um, the other thing is about the gully projects, and I'm not sure, but there's about 10 major gully projects in Hamilton, all supported voluntarily by people who are putting thousands of hours in, and also probably millions of dollars worth of trees going in for free for the city council and the, and the community. So I'm just new, I've been doing this for a year. <coughs> but um, basically speaking to that, um, there are projects right across Kirikuru Door doing this. Um, there are many restoration projects on <coughs> public and private land, and quite often the workers, such as myself, voluntary workers, just go and, knock, and door knock and say, oh, can we replant your bit of gully? And private people usually go, oh, yes, of course you can. So this is, um, you know, it's not just city council land um, that is involved, it's private land. And I think ideally this would be... Um, put into um, some kind of reservation status um, or some kind of covenant to make sure it's locked in. So that's something the city could perhaps help facilitate. Um, the other thing is the coordination. Like I say, there's about 10 groups, and Go Eco has offered to help coordinate those groups so we can, you know, to hold meetings so we can talk to each other. Um, there's some quite famous groups um, around Hammond Park, for example, uh, Manga Iti is another one. It's a huge area, like lots of hectares of forest being re redeveloped. So it'd be good to have go eco support the coordination of what we're doing. Um, Waifakareke Natural Heritage Park, we also support that. We work out there. Um, and that is well underway, so I th I'm not sure, but it's about 60 hectares of land which is being planted up. And I'm a bit of a monetarist, I suppose. What's the economic value of it? I think it's going to be a huge thing for Hamilton once it's, it's up and going and complementing the zoo. It's going to be a huge tourist attraction. And <clears throat> at the moment, the city's building infrastructure and that in there. And like I say, I'm a bit got a commercial orientation. Where's the money? I think it will bring you know, wealth, not just in natural heritage, but you know, commercial wealth as well. Um, as <laughs> I'm in... Hillcrest in Carrington Avenue is where I live, and it's the population density is skyrocketing there. So instead of one dwelling per section, we've got now four dwellings per section, and there's less trees and all that. So what are people going to do? They're going to walk to the gardens and the gullies and so on. So I think um, the Silverdale Gully, you might call it, um, it's got a track through. Um, that would be a great amenity for people to have a, a circular runway. There's already people going in there. <clears throat> so that's the whole thing of the gully projects and the Natural Heritage Park. The other thing we support is the local Indigenous Biodiversity Strategy pilot, uh, which I've been to two submissions on that. But I think that's, again, just uh, Indigenous biodiversity is a, a great thing, but um, I suppose it's the nice words and what I'm a bit afraid of. We have nice words, nice policy. Um, will it be actually implemented? So I think um, we need things, things to be implemented. Um, a w another thing that keeps coming up is a city council website, like a one-stop shop, so all of these biodiversity projects mm. can be linked to that with their different stories and so on. And, for example, my group should be there with a link and a little blurb and so on and all, all of our reports um, that we do. Um, the next thing that we support is um, the Advisory Committee on Regional Environment, known as ACRE. So a lot of environmental activists at a high level are on that committee. So it would be good if the Council recognised the work of ACRE um, as a coordinating um, facility, really. So in conclusion, the Manga or Nua Care Group would like to see a strong relationship between City Council policies and implementation. So like I say, we have the nice words. When it comes to implementation, um, especially with coordination, it's really not happening. So the council kind of tells us what they want us to do, but um, they don't ask us what we see as people working on the ground, what we need. So we need more communication, which I think hopefully is happening. Um, the second thing is um, that the biodiversity implementation be a consistent and ongoing part of the rating plan. At the moment, it's stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. So in Silverdale, um, the funding, what's happening about the funding, don't know. 
and all the contracts are stopping and starting, and it's very inconsistent. It's like plant and walk away. So plants are put in, and they get overwhelmed with weeds and all that kind of carry on. So it needs to be part of the rating plan, not to say, oh, we can't plan. I think it needs to be part of the plan, have consistent funding um, to support staffing and capital works. So we would like, of course, a bit of funding for a bit of structure and whatnot in return for all the free labour that we do put in. So in conclusion, those are my two points. One is communication and co-management, and the other one is um, to have a, a solid rating plan for that. So I'd just like to thank everyone for their consideration, and um, basically we're supporting the work of Go Eco in our particular aspect. So, yeah. Thank you, George. So following on from George, um, and uh, I'm, I'm aware that we're running out of time, so hopefully Anna will participate in some question answering as well, if that's okay with Anna. Um, th our, the next biggest portion of our work is around waste minimisation and um, 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 projects that are, uh, are involved with that. Um, it's given us... Um, a great deal of pleasure this year to be involved in some of the H3 events, um, starting with Hamilton 7, so our first time out with that. It was a last minute invitation and we pulled together a remarkable number of people over Christmas um, to, to help out with that event. There was a lot learnt and we enjoyed working with the waste minimisation team. Um, we hope to be involved after further discussion with the team um, in the curbside uh, waste education over the next year for the rollout of the new systems in relation to that. And we'll also be discussing GoEco's further involvement in a, a broad array of waste minimisation, composting, uh, curbside recycling and other innovative ideas around food waste. Our biggest climate action project is Kaivolution. Um, and uh, I think we are pretty close to 700,000 kilos of food waste that's been redistributed over the last four years. It'll be our fifth birthday this year. Um, we look forward to seeing you all at the celebration. Um, but uh, one point of interest which I thought uh, you might like to know is our Kaivolution coordinator just sent a text to say that the Kaivolution Free Store had a record day yesterday. The free store is open Monday to Friday for one and a half hours per day and yesterday 412 people went to the free store to, to uh, source food, um, which is indicative of just how much food waste there is available in the city um, for redistribution, but also the very dangerous slope that, that is moving from being a climate action project to a social project. Um, so on that note, we're working with food banks um, and seeing the true intersections of social and environmental health um, across the city. Um, we're always pleased to host you, to show you how that works and to introduce you to the people that we work with. So kia ora tātou. Thank you for listening to us today and receiving our report. We're happy to answer questions. Thank you very much. Thank you for the time that you've put into presentations today and um, uh, the good work that you're doing around waste. Um, and thank you. Recently, you coordinated on my behalf a meeting around the biodiversity strategy where staff and, and stakeholders were able to come together, and I appreciate you being the conduit for that conversation. Uh, so we will take some questions now. Councillor Bunting. Thank you, Councillor Joe. Um, George, Adam, thank you for your yeah. presentation. Um, just, I just want to um, question a couple of little things in here because um, I might have taken them the wrong way. With regards um, the environment on page 39, we're talking about the attitudes of waste minimisation. Now, I remember when we were putting toge uh, that together, GoEco was influential in, in what we came up with. And if, if I remember rightly, the, the whole thrust of it was to, uh, to make it a more enabling plan for the individual. But what you've said here is that this shouldn't be on the individual. That doesn't seem to ring true to me. So either something's changed or I've misunderstood that. Can you please clarify that for me with regards to that? That paragraph there? Sorry, which paragraph are we looking at? Which um, paragraph paragraph uh, uh, under environment on page 39, paragraph okay. 1. Thank you. So. Yep. 
So I guess my question was, um, we were trying to move away from a systematic approach, which was heartily endorsed by you guys during the waste minimisation discussion, uh, to a more community, individual-based recycling system. Um, and yet that seems at odd with the thrust of this paragraph here. I, I might have just read it wrong. Yeah, I think our point really is that, um, I guess waste minimisation at an individual level is still hugely challenging um, because people, um, you know, often uh, shop at, at supermarkets and we know the extent of plastic that can be found um, mm. in supermarkets and in the food system. So I guess that, that, that statement isn't about, um, it's about the need to create a system that reduces that waste from the outset. It's, it's not um, oh, about your system because you're, what you're implementing is fantastic in terms of the curbside recycling, et cetera. Yep. This is about saying, okay, we have a system, a food system that um, generates a huge amount of waste and that's where we need to be focusing more is how can we um, do food differently. And so we have a number of uh, projects um, which um, we've supported well by the council um, mm. through um, Yona is involved with Tapuna Kai and you are an advocate for mm. in terms of you know bringing back that local food uh, aspect which often can mean less waste because there's less waste associated with that if it's um, closer to home. Right. Um, so it's about advocating for an alternative system to what we have now and it, and it links to uh, what Adam's talking about, about climate change. I mean, if we yeah. really are serious about reducing emissions, we need to look at where we eat, and that's a fundamental part of climate action, is localising food. So that, that's what that's about. It's about getting away from individual responsibility, because mm -hmm. there's only so much an individual can do, and it's looking at the system and how we can change that up. And it is fantastic to have the support of council mm. in that work, and we do have it through Tapuna Kai, which is, yeah, yeah great. Great, thank, thank you. you. That makes it read quite differently. Thank you. Um, and just uh, the second one, while, while you're there, and I'd like to acknowledge you for the great work you're doing with um, the cycle uh, or bike Waikato and, and the likes. Um, and I, Adam, your coverage of uh, alternative transport was interesting to me and something I support. I didn't see a lot of that in this report. Uh, the only the only acknowledgement I saw that we supported Bike Day, um, and I, I know that you guys are doing a, a heck of a lot more in that space. Um, can you maybe elaborate for the benefit of the group what else you are doing? And yeah, I guess in terms of that though, and, and it, it is a little bit why we've brought people with us. We mm. are a, um, an NGO with limited resources, so our work mm. connects to other groups. And so our work for cycling is largely with um, Bike Hamilton, Bike Waikato, there's a, a mm. name confusion yeah. there. But um, we're definitely working alongside other cycle advocates because we have to. That's the only way we're really going to uh, make make change. Um, but we really do acknowledge the work that the council's done again in that space in terms mm -hmm. of the um, school links project going forward. That's fantastic. That's going to make a huge difference to um, biking in Hamilton. Um, so we just yeah really really encourage that direction that council's taking and support Adam in saying you know there's just so much more we can do. Um, and the community is passionate about it, and we see that in the um, Bike Hamilton network. There's a diverse network of people there who are really willing to walk alongside council and support those developments to happen. And GoEco is part of that, and we have the facility for meetings, etc. at GoEco. We're also working alongside Cycle New Zealand um, and mm. currently training up adult bike safety trainers um, to make that available for free in the community. Thank you. No, thank you. Um, just in the interest of time, councillors, we can please bring your two top questions, and then if there's time afterwards, we can go back to, to individual councillors. So, um, Councillor McPherson, or next. Thanks. Um, I want to start with the one that Bunty ended with, um, transportation, because I also found this really, I was surprisingly light until Adam spoke, so I was pleased that you did cover transportation and talking about the um, one of the major producers of greenhouse gas, for instance, uh, and us being worse than probably the majority of Western countries around the world in that respect. Um, you talked about what you're doing, the bike promotion area and support and that. What about the public transport area in terms of realistic options in the short to medium term for for other people in the community where bikes may not be the solution because of distance or other personal reasons? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I guess the responsibility for public transport sits with the uh, regional council, as we understand. And our, our concern most recently, and GoEco is a living wage employer, so we have been advocating 
um, to the regional council around, I mean, we can't have a healthy um, public transport system until we're prepared to pay um, our bus drivers adequately. And I know that City Council has um, been uh, part of that move to try and get uh, bus drivers to be paid adequately. I mean, if we, if we really value these systems, we need to, we need to invest into them. And that's um, missing at the moment, as we understand. So I guess our advocacy might not seem um, obvious at times, but the, the living wage and having bus drivers paid well is certainly part of having a robust system. Yeah. Um, so that's what we've been doing in that space. And we do, do mention the living wage in here. Yeah, public no, transport, sorry, public transport and trains, um, especially we're quite excited about the development of trains. Uh, the public transport and trains are, are concepts and ideas that we talk about in workshops and public forums with uh, with people who, who attend those, um, and we advocate for that. We also, um, wherever possible, advocate for a reduction in cars and an increase in public transport, um, especially accessibility. We're aware that for people with accessibility issues, there's a limited number of platforms um, available for them in the city and bus stops, although that has increased um, lately. Um, or, or is predicted to increase, they're really keen to, to see more of that. Um, we have really good conversations with um, community groups on what that looks like, and we strongly encourage people to submit on public transport wherever possible. Just maybe draw your attention to the fact that probably 50% of the public transport provision is due to the city, um, so, so don't, question, forget, question, don't forget question. the city uh, there. It's not that the regional council provides the things that go on the roads, but not the the roads and other, yeah, all no, the no, rest of that provided by us. And um, we so absolutely we, we need to be acknowledge pushed. Councillor yeah. McPherson's advocacy. It's not so much advocacy. acknowledging, it's me, push us, yeah. not just the regional council, yeah. is what I'm saying. Right. But Point the, the other area, yeah. sorry, that I want to talk about before the chair jumps down the throat, is the, um, the uh, city growth. There was a comment, I'm not sure whether it was by Adam or someone else, about us growing out into uh, green areas on the outskirts of the city. And then George talked about four houses and one property. Um, I want to tease out your GoEco's attitude towards building up rather than building out, because there's, a, for instance, a debate late, just later today uh, will be had on whether Rotatuna, the new Rotatuna town centre should also have apartment spaces within the urban centre, not just on the outskirts. You know, so those sorts of issues we're interested in too. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the eternal growth of a city is not environmentally sound as a concept. Uh, the city can be grown up, and we're seeing some of that intensification occur, especially in areas like Fairfield at the moment, where properties are being removed and replaced by multiple dwellings. There come some problems with that, and one is access to green space. So, you know, at the stage, we would only like to see that in areas where there is walkable access to green space and facilities nearby, especially for families with children, uh, people with pets, all of those things. But um, the ability to access that for people's well-being is really important, and there's plenty of research to support that statement. Um, in relation, we've we've just submitted on Amberfield, um, and we believe that the city has a, a huge opportunity, a massive opportunity at the moment, to actually put biodiversity and conservation first and rethink how we do those kinds of plans, and then create a model that can be applied across Peacock, um, because. We do need additional housing and, and, and we admit that. We do not believe the solution is urban sprawl. Um, and we are vitally interested in how we increase biodiversity while meeting that housing need. Just the follow up then, um, are you aware we've got the highest proportion of infill housing of anywhere in New Zealand in the last few years? I mean, it's 55%. What sort of level do you think in terms of when you have growth what, how much should be infill? How much should be sprawl? Has he got any well, minimise sprawl. Absolutely minimise sprawl. But in order to answer your question fully, we, we would have to talk to our networks and supporters about how they believe that should look. You know, It's a relatively new discussion in the environmental sector. Thank you. Thanks. Councillor Henry. Thank you, 
very much, Madam Chair. And I have a few small questions, short questions, very short questions. <laughs> Thank you very much for your report. Um, first thing, I just want to ask who wrote the report? Was it a collaboration or was it, was it one It was a collaborative person? report. Okay. Um, quick question, what, what is the hearing downstairs that you were part of? The Resource Management Act hearing um, into the Amber Fields subdivision. Okay. Thank you so much. The other question I have got is, um, did you lobby the government for, um, for the bottle deposit scheme? Did, um, did you lobby them on that one? The bottle deposit scheme? Mm. Yes, we did. Okay. Yeah, okay. we joined that. Yep. Great. Um, and then you talked about, um, and on page 41, um, uh, uh, e-waste recycling, and uh, you mentioned free e-waste dumping operations. Uh, what, what do you know about that? What's happening there? So that we're currently investigating that, and we are going to seek some further information from the waste minimisation team. So we're a depot for e-waste, and people pay um, to... Uh, deposit their e-waste with us. We send it to Tokoroa to be processed to a Ministry for, Educa Ministry for Environment standard, um, and which is the highest standard available at the moment. And what we're aware of are people um, who are inviting um, the ability to dump e-waste for free. Um, and uh, we're not so clear on what happens to that what's been stripped out of it. E-waste is quite an innovative space and it's fast developing what can and cannot be recycled out of that. Um, but what it does cause for us is a drop in people who are ethically disposing of e-waste at this point in time. So that's a piece of work that we will be pursuing with the waste minimisation team here. Okay, thank you. And just one quick question to Adam. Thank you very much for your um, for your report. That was fantastic. I love hearing from young people because you, you, you definitely have to clean up our mess. And you talked about adults, not specific adults, but we all adults have made a mess. Um, but there's one question. What? <laughs> thank you for that music. Um, you talked about Vancouver and the amount that there's 25% uh, coverage of, did you say gr uh, trees? Or trees, just green yeah. space? Um, that's referring to trees, yeah. Trees, yeah, okay. Particular. Do you know uh, uh, in Hamilton what the, what the percentage is, is for Hamilton? Um, I don't know, not at this it's, moment. It's uh, one and a half percent, and Thank we're aiming for 10 to 20 percent. Right, that's small, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councillor Pascoe. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, look, I've got one quick question around the environment and the waste minimisation, where you state in the report... GoEco was reluctant to put the burden of change onto the individual. Just trying to get my head around um, where you think the in what part the individual plays in terms of waste minimisation. And the reason for my question is I understand one of the major supermarket chains is now trialling um, bring your own container for your meat products and your vegetables and so forth. Um, a, a statement like that kind of makes me think that you're suggesting that the individual doesn't have any part at all to play. No, that's not what the statement means. So the supermarket, as you've just pointed out, is creating a system that supports the individual to make a, a positive choice. Yep. And that's the system that we're missing at the moment. So I guess what we're saying is, yes, we want systems to change so that the individual um, is support, supported in their decision making. And at the moment, um, we think that's still heavily weighted to uh, an individual not being able to make uh, good choices. So how will you now encourage the individual, and that's using this example, but there are lots of other examples out there in terms of waste minimisation that, that organisations do make available to individuals. Is it part of your role, and, how, and how, if it is, how will you encourage individuals to, I'll use the word capitalise, but I don't think that's a very good so uh, we word that. to use based on other words in the, <laughs> in the report, to capitalise on that opportunity? Mm. So, so, so we educate through a variety of channels, so not only from our environment centre, but we also work with organisations and community centres to educate their staff and communities. Um, we work with, closely with Enviro schools and, and um, children and young people um, in that space. And um, on Monday night, we're also releasing our first ever movie in relation to waste minimisation and... Uh, 
plastic bag free shopping, um, which we've done with the support of Trust Waikato. Okay. So, thank, thank you. you. Councillor Mallet, two Thank questions. you, and it's probably directed more towards George. Just before you, just before you slip, <laughs> not off, George. Um, and it's regarding, and thank you for all your efforts into planting and whatnot. Um, I just I want to question you on the diversity versus native. You're talking about diversity yes. all the time, yes. but then we get other people. Maybe it's you, the same people coming back. We want natives. Mm, mm, so there's mm. a huge contradiction there, isn't it? Oh, not necessarily. I think what's happened is um, the New Zealand forest is very diverse in species, so we've got hundreds of species of plants and hundreds of species of trees and ferns and so on. Um, and what's happened with the forest being cleared, <coughs> it's reduced diversity. Um, so within the city we've got a lot of um, mainly European plants and whatnot, right through. The gully's really been overwhelmed by things like honeysuckle, convolvulus, and plants that have suppressed the diversity that was in the gully. So um, what we're trying to do is regain that. And I think the city policy regarding the biggest gully of them all, which is the Waikato River Gully, is have natives um, close to the water, and as you get come back into the parks, it's more exotics. So we've got, again, a diversity of uh, native or indigenous plants going through to the exotics, so we've got both. Um, I think there's a bit of confusion in terms between native and indigenous. So <coughs> native really Do they is not mean the same thing? Not exactly. So a native plant or species, say the pukeko, is you could say native, but it's, it's originally plant, flown right? in from Australia. It's not a plant. Mm. But there's mm. other plants that have come in from other countries and established as what you might call born and bred here, but they're not unique to New Zealand. Um, so the bracken fern, for example, that we have is native, but also native to um, England and Europe. It's the same species. So that is native to New Zealand, but it's not indigenous because it's worldwide, whereas other things like the kauri tree is um, indigenous because it's only here. So by restoring the plants that are only here, that's uh, restoring diversity. So okay. does that make sense? Yep, that's yeah. cool. Yep. Uh, when, you're, when you're planting, you're making a decision what species to put in there. Yes. Um, obviously, planting has a lot of reasons, <laughs> like there's you know, er er erosion control, water control, um, beauty, beauty yes. creation of food, all that mm. sort of stuff. How do you make a judgment between the best fit for purpose versus your other challenge to try and get native stroke indigenous food, uh, indigenous plants. Okay, so, um, yeah, so um, each probably person is working in gully restoration has got their own ideas. Mm. Um, there's an excellent um, gully restoration guide printed, you know, published by the um, Hamilton City Council. But basically you've got different um, environmental aspects. So top of the gully, it's kind of flat and then it comes down very steeply, it's very dry. Foot slopes are wet or uh, wettish, and then on the flat it's very swampy. So certain species naturally fit in certain areas. Um, you have... Um, Sorry, George, can I interrupt you there? Without yeah. being disrespectful, uh, so you guys have got the knowledge to know yes, what which goes where and goes what should where. go where. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And plus there's other issues like amenity values, aesthetics and things like that. Mm. So that's where we have a few debates about having it look nice versus, um, you know, diversity. And so yeah. your, your, your decisions on those things are your decisions. You're not going to the local... Hamilton City Council or Environment Waikato and saying what's the best tree or plant to plant here? Mm. I suppose we can, can, how can I say, governed by conventional wisdom. So in other words, there's the gully guide and then there's um, guidance from the University of Waikato and then a lot of our people are highly experienced mm. uh, on which plants go where. So we're a group of experts in a way that have studied... Um, different environmental aspects and which species goes where. So. Okay, thank you. <coughs> yep. Council, um, Mayor Andrew. Um, I have a motion to put, which I've given to governance. Yep, thank you. We've um, received it. Seconder. Thank you, we've received it. Thank you. We're still in questions. Maybe Maung if we can get it up on the board so we can consider it as we move forward. Mangai to ua. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Tēnā koutou jau koutou maui a... E whakatina nga mai o kaita whakaaro ki mui a mātou e tene ata. Ahi ahi, kei te mahi atu. Hey, uh, just a question on page 37. I think I understand, but it's the fourth paragraph down, which talks about 
only retired Pākehā uh, being available to restore and conserve. Uh, uh, is that what you're saying with that statement? Well, that's not my statement, right? Uh, I didn't say that. However, I would fully agree with it. Um, it's very, very interesting. So we were planting yesterday. Um, we had 18 people on Maunga Tautari and all retired Pākehā, right? And so I sort of have issues with that because um, being an old retired you know, white man, um, we have the power in a way because we can do voluntary work. So we've got money, we don't have to work. So therefore we, um, you know, the old white men in particular and some old white women, uh, we do 99% of all this work. Um, but I feel a bit uncomfortable with that. I think those people are experts, they're highly privileged, highly educated, captains of industry. They are people that get on with stuff and are very effective. But I think I would like more diversity from the mana whenua to come in. So I'm sort of actively liaising with Ngāti Hawamahi Trust because um, they are our partners in the gully. Well, they do most of the work. But I do feel, yeah, there's... There need to be more diversity, and I think my, you know, ethnic um, colleagues could be more welcoming. Um, and I, I hate, I don't know if I should say this, but when Māori people turn up, you can get the comment, what are they doing here? You know, honestly. Okay, what are they doing to, here? I think we need so to stop think, this conversation yeah, here. So just to say that it would be nice to have more diversity in there, that's okay. all. Have you any other yeah. questions? No, questions? further questions. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Right, so we go to, thank you very much for yeah. bringing all your ideas to the table. Uh, Councillors, we're going to go to the discussion. There is a, a motion, um, if there is a seconder, and I'll move the original motion so that we, as an amendment, so that we can receive, choose to receive the report if we want. Is there a seconder for either of those? Uh, just to receive the report. So. Um, Councillor Mallet will second the motion. The amendment is that we receive the report, which is what I'm moving, which is standard procedure for external reports of this nature. Because I haven't actually been involved with um, Andrew's, I I'm just a little. Uh, the the he will speak to political he overtones. He is will speak really to subjective. it. Really subjective. He will speak and to it in his. Um, okay. Well, I just well I, before I second, I just want to make sure I totally understand what it means. I, I'm pretty sure I know what it means, but it might. And this is going to take a long time. It might be easier if you, if you said the, the, the sentences you'd like to have altered. But I know what you're trying to get at, and I agree with you. But um, in, a, in, a, in two days from now, someone else will say, well, that's not the political bit. That's the political bit. So okay, just so in the interest of clarity as point to of, um, Point of clarification here. Um, the terms of reference of this committee, if you look on page two in the yellow papers, clearly outline that to receive and to consider presentations and reports from stakeholders, government departments, organisations, interest groups on community development, wellbeing issues and opportunities. So that is the terms of reference of this group. So what we, we don't have to agree with all of the sentiment. We may even go as far as feeling personally offended by parts of their report. That's one thing. However, it is actually. Point of order, I'll your motion, What's the point of order? Can you quote the point of order? No, that's not a point. That's not a point of order, Mayor Andrew. Read what it says in the put in the reference at the front, but we don't need your debate on why. That is you're not right. a point of order, Mayor Andrew. No, but that that is not a point of order. I'm just saying that. Excuse me. Excuse me. This is rude behaviour to interrupt the chair, which I do not do to you when you're chairing, Mayor Andrew. We, this, I'm just merely pointing out that we do receive reports. It does not mean, as the uh, governance staff advised us at the beginning, that we accept all of the opinions in an independent report. But we are a community and services committee. We accept, we receive reports from other people, how, however we might feel uncomfortable about some of the aspects within them. That's the only point I wanted to make. On that one? There's no point of order. There is no point of order. I was just making a clarification. No, I, there was no point of order. I was just making a clarification on the terms of reference of the committee. Can I ask a question about 
Sure. Thank you. So does that mean then um, by your definition we're actually obliged to receive every report? I'm not sure if we're obliged to receive a report, good question, but it's normal pra practice to receive independent reports whether you like the content in them or not. Correct. So if you're voting against a report, against receiving a report, you're essentially voting that you disagree with the information content of the report in that it doesn't align with the terms of reference of the committee and shouldn't form part of the official record. So that's the only reason you could vote yes. against receiving a report? Okay. Yeah, it was, yes. Okay. Kind of it into anyway, a moving along, um, there is a motion which Andrew can speak to. There is also an amendment, but that is not, it's not up there at the moment. That's not seconded. So, <coughs> oh, you're seconded, Councillor McPherson. Thank you very much. So we have an amendment and a motion. We'll go into the debate. Mayor Andrew, you are first to speak as the mover of the motion. I support recycling, I support Māori representation, I support cleaning up our gullies, I support cycling, walking and of course scooters, I support paying our cleaners and our bus drivers adequately. But this report has political and derogatory overtones. A market-based capitalist system continues to fail the majority, amongst other political leanings. I cannot receive this report. It undermines the whole basis that democracy is based on in its current form. Should elected members vote to support the motion, I would be happy to accept this report back again at full council without the link between the capitalist system, Pakia, privilege, which is causing, which the implication is, is causing oppressing, oppression and causing, forcing people to struggle for survival in their daily life. Thank you, Mayor Andrew. Um, I'm moving the amendment on the basis that um, independent reports uh, are received by council on a regular basis, and we receive them, and that does not imply or mean that we accept or agree with the content contained within those reports. Um, had not seen this report, the written part of this report, um, before it went to print, but I knew we were expecting a report from Go Eco. Personally, I will agree, there are some statements in there that I do not feel were helpful and I feel myself uncomfortable with. Um, I think we need to work on the issues and not attack people, as I've said earlier today. And so I was disappointed to see some of those references. And um, however, I have to take the view that it is their democratic right to bring an independent report for us to question it, which we have done. But we must, by the terms of reference, accept it. And that is what I will do. Accept it, not agree with it. Um, Councillor Hamilton. Thanks, Paula. Chair, I, I, um, I sympathise and empathise with what you said. I think you've spoken really well. Um, and I can accept that that's the terms of reference, but because of these issues, I won't be supporting, I won't be receiving this report. Um, Go Echo, you guys have done a fantastic job and you do so much good, and I think you've tainted this report by these two paragraphs. And just by removing them, uh, whether they're personal views, they may not be reflective of all your, your groups and uh, interactions. I think um, you've, it's just unfortunate because it just, it just colours the good work that you do. You've used the word Pākehā, which can, which can mean non-Māori, but in your statement, does that include retired Indian folk, retired Asian folk? Um, and um, like me, Andrew's you know, alluded to already, you know, bringing in colonisation into a talk about diverse communities and sustainability um, doesn't help you. And quite frankly, as Deputy Chair, I'll be looking a lot more strongly at this ahead of time because I don't want to see your good work get tarnished. But, but to me, that's unacceptable. Thank you. Councillor McPherson. As a Pākehā New Zealander, I um, am minded of a statement that the, the truth is often uncomfortable. And not everyone has the same truth, of course. But the issue here is, is this report addressing the issues or some of the issues facing this council within this... Um, 
the umbrella, if you like, of this committee's work. And I think that's the point that Paula was making. I certainly agree with that. But I not only accept the report, I agree with most of it. And I would be outraged if the committee were not to ex receive the report just because they didn't like some of the things in it. There are tonnes of reports that I've voted to receive over the years that have had some, sometimes even all of it, I don't like, but I've received them because they're within the, the work area of council. And I think that's, that's the important thing. Um, Go Eco is one of the handful of organisations in this city that is working outside the council, but doing a lot of council's work for it. Like some of the other community NGOs, I think we should regard ourselves as bloody lucky to have a group like Go Eco that raises those sorts of issues with us. Yes, it might be uncomfortable uh, for some, and some of the things that I hear from some business representatives that come here are uncomfortable for me and I don't like them and I don't agree with them, but I listen to them and I receive them. You know, I do the, I do the right thing. I treat them in the right way. And this is another thing. And, and I, I actually urge the Mayor to withdraw his motion. I think that his motion does this council a disservice by not receiving the report in this area. This is the opinion of GoEco staff and organisation. Um, they are giving it to us because we ask them to give it to us, and I think it's important that we receive it. Um, whether we take up any of the issues is another matter for us to decide. And look, if it wasn't for GoEco doing some things, Kai Evolution comes to mind, national leaders, if not international leaders, in that space. Um, you know, we would have be ending up having pressure on us to do some of the work that they're doing at no cost to ratepayers just like some of the community groups do in their own spheres. Think about it not just because you feel uncomfortable at some of the words in here or don't like them. Think about what sort of issues they're raising and which are the ones that you want council to take up. I think that's the proper way to approach an outside report. Otherwise, every time a business person comes in here and slags council off, for some of our non-business policies, I'm going to refuse to accept their report if I were to take that attitude, which I think would be wrong, by the way. But that's the, that's the other side of the same coin. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McPherson. Councillor O'Leary. Thank you. I um, strongly support the comments made by Councillor McPherson. I'm reading the report. Conservation and restoration work appears to depend on retired Pākehā who have the time and privilege seems like uh, a fact of experience from the group. Colonisation and systems of oppression continue to force people to a daily struggle of survival. Certainly I've seen that in my community. I don't uh, take exception to the report and I'm not offended by the report. I think the report is thorough. It touches on many, many, many issues facing our community, our country and our planet. Uh, I am certainly not an expert in any of these areas and I thank you for your report and the work that you do in the community. Since we are forced into debating uh, a, a slightly different issue and a comment or a couple of comments that are made in your report that some members have taken offence to, uh, you have the absolute right, as do any member in any organisation and any individual in our city, the right to freedom of opinion to the people who work who who work for you, that is us. You have the absolute right and the freedom to participate in a democratic process as you see fit. And censorship by this council of any kind, I will not support. So thank you for the work that you do and thank you for the report. I support it. Oh, sorry. Councillor Mallet. Thank you. Um, this has been an absolutely glorious debate. Um, I think uh, I agree with just about everything that everyone said, and the most important thing is that uh, freedom of speech has not been stopped by anyone. Um, you've been able to report your stuff to us, and we just accept, you know, we, no one's got up and shot you for it. So I think that's a good step. Um, uh, I am sorry, Andrew, I think I'm going to change my position on this one as a consequence of what I've heard in the debate, um, which is not very common for me. Uh, I think this, as I said, I think 
congratulations to everyone. I think the important issue here was freedom of speech. I'm really pleased that you guys... Uh, well, actually, I'm not happy that I saw what it was in your report, but I'm glad that you were allowed to present it and uh, speak to it. Um, if you know me very well at all, a lot of this stuff sent chills down my spine. But I think it is absolutely appropriate that it, was, that it has been uh, addressed to us, we have debated it, and that it be received and acknowledge that this is what... This is a load of rubbish they gave us. <laughs> OK, so we no longer have a seconder for a the motion. Is there... Um, you've withdrawn. Is there a mo um, mover... A seconder for Mayor Andrews' motion? Oh, no, no, I'm not... I'm not oh, I... my oh, you're just going to... OK, right, OK, no, fine. Thought you were. OK, thank you, Councillor Casson. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, look, I'm actually agreeing with Gary here, and, and um, going on, um, Mungai um, Ollie before asked a question about the uh, the inclusiveness of people coming to help in the gullies, where so you, you answered the question, you know, Go Eco is an inclusive organisation. If you have um, older white people questioning why a Maori person is helping them, then Maybe Go Eco should be um, showing some lead leadership here and asking those persons who are questioning Mary Inclusion to leave. Yeah, it's me that sort of witnessed this kind of thing. Uh, no, sorry, 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 we are in debate. Yeah. We can't take thank any you. further commentary. Councillor Henry. Thank you so much, um, Madam Chair. And thank you for your report. And um, look, um, on first ranks, I, I had, had to say, uh, oh, golly, what's going on here? But, you know, thinking about it now and hearing the debate and everything, good on you <laughs> for, for, for saying something. I mean, sometimes, w of course, you have to say stuff that is not always um, liked by everyone. If you're liked by everyone, you're not doing things right, I think. So, um, and... And you have got a lot to do. I mean, the, the, the report is so full with all these different aspects that you're covering, and you're doing it on a shoestring. And so I just think um, I applaud what you're doing. I'm really looking forward to actually need to talk to you because I want to work with you a bit more on some of my hot buttons as well. But we waste minimization is one of them that's fantastic. And the other ones will have another chat. Um, Adam, thank you for coming along. Thank you, George. Really appreciate it. Anna, you do a great job. Joe, you do a great job. And um, and this is an ongoing challenge. And just like um, getting the systems to change to pr not produce so much waste is going to be a long-term thing. But um, I think as long as we just keep poking and keep poking and keep pushing, and all of us together, um, it is, it, you know, we, we can make a change and all adults can make a change. And I'm, look, and I'm grateful for uh, um, retired Pākehā that they have got the time and the privilege to help. Uh, wonderful. And, um, you know, and there's so many people actually do voluntary work out there. And it is not just Pākehā. I've seen, I've, I've seen lots of other pe Māori people as well. And, and, and I've worked with them on a, on a, um, on a voluntary basis. So um, thank you for the report and um, keep, keep going strong. Thank you. Um, Councillor Bunting. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yep, um, there were some, some words in here I, I didn't like, of course, uh, which were provocative, so well done. I, I actually am coming up on this uh, on a different angle. I think it was a little bit scant in the transport uh, area, but that's my bag at the moment. I think you guys are uh, underselling yourselves in the, in the great work you're doing in there. I would have liked to see a little bit more in there. Um, I don't necessarily agree with you, George, with regards to the, you know, um, the circumstances that brought that on, but I'm happy to talk with you offline about it. Um, but, uh, yeah, keep on going. I'll um, receive the report. Don't like parts of it. Love other parts of it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now we... Oh, sorry. Pop, you popped up. Māngai. To, to, uh... Uh, thanks, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I'll be supporting the motion pursuant to uh, number three of the terms of reference. The um, and Mayor Andrews' motion? Or the... I understand that's the amendment. No, no I'm the, the amendment. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you everyone for that. Um, Mayor Andrew, you have the right of reply. So, firstly, I want to make it very clear that I don't agree, uh, that I agree with the environmental issues here. So I'm not questioning the environmental issues and I'm not 
putting those in a negative light at all. I strongly disagree <coughs> with the advice from democracy that we have to accept a report because that's what the terms of reference, the way it's written. That is not freedom. That's not freedom to vote. And if that was the case, why are we putting it to the vote in the first place? The, the reason we have a vote is to decide whether we want to accept the report or not. I'm not offended by this report, but this report goes to the heart of undermining democracy in its form that we know today. And if we want to unwind democracy, so that we take away people who work hard, the position they are in to work hard, to m make us somehow all one race, to make us all earn the same money, and to share everything we have with everyone, we also take away the foundation of why we work hard and what motivates us to get out of bed in the morning, get to work early, work longer hours or work more cl cleverly so that we can grow our economy. So I am not saying I don't agree with the environmental outcomes, but I'm strongly opposed to the undermining of the free market and capitalism and democracy as we know it that has woven the tone that's woven through the report. Thank you. So we will go to vote on the, amend on the amendment first, which is just to receive the report, noting that doesn't mean we agree with all the content. The amendment is carried, 11 for, 2 against. Thank you. The amendment becomes the substantive. <coughs> Sorry, we have to reset. <coughs> reset and go. Any luck? The amendment as a substantive motion is declared carried. 12 for, 1 against. Thank you, councillors. We'll be back at 2 o'clock for the afternoon session. Thank you.